Today on Waking Up in America, we continue our discussion with Lou Ross, creator of Fickle Boards. We shift gears to his early life as a sensitive young misfit searching for love in the world driven by power and influence. I am Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. You, when you were, you were young and you, you came into the skateboard culture, you said you didn't do drugs. You didn't. Yeah, no, I was straight edge because straight edge just got invented when I was like 14. You know, Youth of Today and the New York hardcore scene hit and I went straight edge. I was also in martial arts. When I started skateboarding at 12, I also started in martial arts, which is another independent, you know, you're, you're, you're competing with yourself. It's really about improving and developing yourself. Skateboarding is about self-development. And, yes, and yes. even team skateboarding still is individual journey. So I've always gravitated toward those things. You know. Right. I understand because you have to practice one thing over and over and over again to get really, really good. And so only you focus can, only and only you, you can do it. And it's your practice. So it's very yeah. much like martial arts. It's not a team sport. So when was your shift? Hmm. Oh, well, I mean, okay. So um, martial arts and skateboarding were a big part of how I, tr I began to find my way in the world. You know, 12 year old kid you know, sensitive, socially maladjusted, pretty badly bullied. I got bullied pretty savagely. Um, so many people have that story. And, um, and uh, I was, uh, I got into a really dark place. I mean, do we want to talk about that? Yeah, I got, I, I'm got really gnarly. I got really gnarly because um, the world is extremely unwelcoming toward organisms like me. <laughs> like people who are sensitive and idealistic really get the they really get the business in the world this world's I mean there's plenty of movies about it <laughs> it's on the internet yes and, yes and, it's um, a very universal story I mean if you it's universal there's nothing rare about uh, being a misfit because you just aren't what everyone else is trying to be there you go yeah and uh, that was me to a T and I didn't think that up or invent that that just happened to me and um, I I found my personal context in a spiritual experience that centered around the person of Jesus. Man, I became a I became a radical Jesus kid at about 17. I was just about to turn 17. And this and was I, coming out of that dark. Things got really dark. Yeah, it got really place. bad because as a, you know, even if you think about it, really, if you take the snap from eight or 12 years old, you know, being being uh, socially maladjusted and 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 when I say that, I just mean really being an anxious kid really being a sensitive kid and really really understanding that the world around me was filled with bullying influences so so if, if you if you're okay with talking about it sharing yeah you you didn't you did it didn't um come out through drugs or through where did it so come through what happened is you know at 12 i was really bullied savagely and um you know the story where the kid gets really savagely bullied and then he chokes the crap out of his bully so at about 11 or 12 years old, I choked the crap out of my bully, my, my poor bully. And I, uh, and I, I feel, I have feelings today about that process. And, and I, at 12, concluded that the development of personal power was the way to go. I didn't really know. I mean, I was a kid and I was young. You're 15 years old or 13 years old and you're trying to take power over your life and you're trying to get some control over this really bad situation all the time, you know, being sensitive realizing how for, how just amazingly impactful it is for people to be super negative to each other and all this fear and negativity and inferiority flying around all the time and I could never stomach a bully you know having been bullied I never could stomach when someone was picking on other people I mean I got my, my I got my I got my butt kicked so many times and I so I did, went on the martial arts journey what happened was I let anger be like my personal power you know if I was a 12-step approach it became it be, the 12-step approach for me was that anger and rage were my personal higher power and I picked them I actually took some 12-step language as a kid and said then anger and rage rage will be my personal power my higher power because rage you know like want to cut through all this negativity and a lot of that um, New York hardcore 
uh, super, uh, it was positive punk, but it was extremely aggressive. And uh, that stuff became my way. And what happened with me is that all that anger, like, it wore me out. Yeah. And my, and I started to just... Well, especially if you're the sensitive. I was a kid. Yeah, I was a sensitive yeah. person and I was young and I didn't have perspective and I began to wear out. And the more I trained in martial arts and the more intense I got, the more I started to, I just call it, I just started unraveling. I started self-harming. Mm. Self-harming became a real way for me to, to take control mm. and to, to take control of the moment and to cause a relief, a sense of relief in the moment very drug-like, very addictive, and very impactful uh, to my life. Self-harming, I was extremely disillusioned with the things people do to relax. I hated, um, for me, drugs always seemed like just a post, they were a postponement. Yeah. Of, and it only things only got worse while you were feeling better about them. And I, 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 I rejected drugs as an option early on, knowing that if I, once I start taking them, I'll never want to stop. I'll die in the gutter and I'm not sure I want to go out like and that. And it's not a solution. Yeah. And anger was anger was powerful, and it had a lot of perks. And I had a lot mm. of I had a lot of perks because I was very strong in anger and good in martial arts. And I got a little crazy. I shaved my head back before people really shaved their heads a lot. Um, it was the first skinhead movement that wasn't that I know of that wasn't neo-Nazi. Uh, it wasn't white power. It was just power. And. I was very into that with the straight edge movement. I was not high in the movement. I wasn't recognized. I was a kid. I was a little brother of the people who were really doing it. But um, I started to rattle apart. You know, I got to 16 years old, and I realized that, like, you know, I'm 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 losing it. I had a couple of these weird fits. They were they were obviously anxiety based fits and very strong spiritual spiritual cries for help. And uh, my my friends began to back away from me because I was I was getting so crazy and I uh, because of my interest in martial arts I really had a, a Taoist kind of philosophy I, you know every kid is a syncretist kids just kind of pick and choose their ideas and that's great yeah I think it's great and if um, we allow them people they'll should. find a way yeah. Yeah, well, if they question authority they might <laughs> yes. find some reliable yes. authority yes absolutely. and so I was looking at Taoism and I had a lot of friends who were Hindu and Taoist and Eastern Eastern you know uh, oh. Eastern thought and philosophy, and they were wonderful to talk to. I really enjoyed uh, talking to them and listening to them, and uh, they had a huge they had a huge impact on me because they were willing to discuss ideas. And uh, some of the folks, I you know, my family was nominally and 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 just a little bit involved in church stuff, and it disgusted me because there was not really a capacity to discuss ideas. They had sort of pat answers to things that were totally unsatisfying to me, and um, and they, they weren't. It, w it wasn't working for me at all. It seemed like a sham. So to tell you the story, you know, I went to this this pastor of uh, of, a, of a church we'd attended, and I said, you know, what's the deal? What's it all about, Alfie? And he said, he said, I'll give you the reasons. He's here's number one. You want to be in the Christian church because it's the glue that holds society together. Who wants to be glue? <laughs> well, you want me I to be glue? Be glue. <laughs> this isn't this isn't Maoist. Yeah. I'm not. I don't have a Maoist background where I want to be part of the collective. Right. Right. I'm yeah. not. I'm not Soviet. I don't want to be part of a collective. I'm an American. I know the value of individual identity and expression. Mm. I don't want to be your glue, bro. <laughs> Take your glue away from me. So yeah. that was really hard. For and me. you're already like you know like you said you 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 you're trying to find your place and. You know, you're not being um, recognized for who you yeah, are, your sensitivity. Yeah, so I understand. His second reason was many, many people have become very rich oh. by following the teachings of the Bible. And I almost flipped the table, not realizing how much like Jesus I would have been being in that moment if I had flipped well, the table. Well, maybe he meant like spiritually <laughs> nope, rich or something. Nope, he meant <laughs> money. He meant money. He started talking about Rockefellers and people like that. It was crazy. Yeah. And then the last I'd reason be communist, the last reason really hooked me. He says, he holds up the Bible and he says, in this book are the answers to every question you will ever ask. And if you only know how to formulate your approach to it so you can divine the answers, you will never lack for guidance in your decisions. Now that sounded great. It sounded like power to me. He, he framed it in power. And I was like, okay. So much of the Christianity around me was all about accruing and gaining power and influence, but it disgusted me. 
because it was in it was totally insincere. So, but that Bible thing he said got me, and I took my Bible home and I said, well, that's a power I could dig. They opened it to Matthew, and I started reading. They got to Matthew chapter five, and I'm I'm an angry punk rocker looking for spiritual power. I'm in dialogue with Taoists and Hindus and Confucianists. I'm a, I have a more Eastern approach to life. Even the straight edge movement was Sung Young Moon unification church based. You know, it was it was all Eastern. And I approached the Bible from this Eastern, and I, I'm, I'm looking in it, and it, Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 and 6, he teaches me that if I have an intention in my heart, that it's as real as a reality of action. If you want to kill, if you are angry at someone, you may as well have killed them. And I read these words of Jesus at probably 15 years old, and I said, well, I'm a bad person. I'm really bad. I'm really angry, and really violent, and I have that's who I am. And I closed the Bible, put it away, and I went on a journey of admission that I was an angry, wicked person. And I was abusive toward my body, toward others. From that age, and I guess two or three years, I, I just was wild and abusive. And I traveled pretty much every dark path as a young kid with this kind of philosophical nihilism that the only reality in all of life is that we're dead at the end of it. It's yeah. the only equalizing factor. And, yeah. and, and I, uh, during that time I wrote it in my journal, I was 15 years old and I wrote, beauty is the greatest deception of all. It makes mm -hmm. you want what you cannot keep. And I was extremely ugly. I, I valued decay and death very highly, like religiously, and became a very, very dark, evil person for a short time and then I just got whiplashed around um, I started to shatter I started to fall apart it was too much for me all this negativity and all this decay and all of this very sincere punk rock and nihilistic engagement I, I started to fall apart you said it was exhausting it I was draining. exhausted I was wearing thin it was like some some like Bilbo in the ring, Gollum thing <laughs> happening to me where I was getting changed by all this negativity. Right. It was crushing me. Right. And, I'm, and, I, and I began to cry out to God and say, God, I read some of your book and it taught me I'm bad. You must care about us. I hadn't read any more. That was all I'd read. And I said, God, you must be out there. You must be in these avatars of the Hindu faith. You must be in the, in the wisdom of the Buddha. You must be in the, in the teaching of the Tao. You must be somewhere. You must be reaching out to us because I can feel it. You must understand if you made us. You know, I, I was I was a believer. I always was a believer. That's amazing. You know, you, you know? will look at kids who are over overcome with anger mm -hmm. and and who are into cutting or yeah. I you know, see my drugs. little brothers and sisters. You see you, yeah. you see them and we have no idea that this is what's going on in them. They're searching. I do. They're, they're <laughs> longing it for It drives well, me nuts. You because do because you've been there. Those, but those guys don't have like anybody. Exactly, it, but it you, can't, you, you don't even have, or you, you've never learned the, cha you know, you've never been given a channel to even show up, to, 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 to talk, to speak, to be heard yeah. because of the sensitivity, because well, you know, of... You know, when I later on became a Christian and there was a, there was a pretty quick period during which I was exposed to the teachings of Leo Biscalia. Mm -hmm. You know who he is? Oh, absolutely. You do? He oh, was nobody my, knows that my, guy. My, my, uh, ah. my, my beginnings as well. So I, I, watched a, <laughs> I watched a talk by Leo Biscaglia, and my mom and I kind of touched on that, and I just began to weep. I remember I was weeping uncontrollably, mm -hmm. and I left the room because I, you know, I hated my parents, and I didn't want to didn't want to talk about it, and I didn't want to have any feelings. And I, I, it was like one week I saw Leo Biscaglia speak on TV, and it busted me. I called my, my Hindu friend up that night, and I said, there has to be a God. And he, I said, it, I discovered it. God has to be love. Yeah. I, when yeah, I watched Leo Biscard, too, yeah. I said, if there's God, then his fundamental nature must be love. And my Hindu friend loved it because he was struggling with Hinduism as a second generation. Uh, you know, he was a he was a son of an immigrant, and Hinduism was was just superficial, and he wanted the spiritual experience of God. So he and I were on a journey together. And then I said, if there's a God, his fundamental nature must be love. If his fundamental nature is love, we must be able to find him by following the breadcrumbs to him mm -hmm. of love. So I began to, and then the next week I went on a thing with my school, big peer leadership seminar, totally not a religious thing, but deeply spiritual. 
And I had a transcendent experience with love there because I, I saw the universality of everyone's need for love once again, very strongly. So it's like, a, here you got this nihil, nihilistic punk rock kid, super, super high philosophical anger, wearing out, losing my sanity, self-destructive. And I, I encounter Leo Biscaglia one week, go on a peer leadership weekend the next week, and then the third week, I go on an Emmaus Walk, uh, uh, Tres Dias, Curcio Delio thing, and get introduced to the fuller teaching about who Jesus was. And I found in Jesus everything I'd been groping around for in the Tao, everything that I'd been, been wondering about in the different avatars and things like that, I found in one, in one place with Jesus. And I, didn't be I couldn't believe people weren't talking about it all the time. They didn't talk about that in church. Um, I've been to church before and they didn't talk about Jesus like this. I mean, it was sick. I was blown away. And I became, I, I became, I told him, I said, I'm going to be the worst Christian you've ever had, but I'm going to be yours. Because I heard he takes those. Because <laughs> they were talking about how even Nicodemus, the religious expert, Jesus was like, nah, 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 that's not what it's about, buddy. It's about this being, this being spiritually renewed by me. And I thought, well, I want to be spiritual. I need a spiritual life infusion, yeah. So I went to Jesus, and I just kept coming back to him. And I haven't stopped. I'm 41 now. I was uh, 16 then. So whatever the math is, that's how many years I've been, like, looking. And that's fed. That's fed. The funny thing is that all of the, um, all the groping around I was doing in the dark, you know, and, and all of the looking for the way forward has been, in a way... Jesus has made it worse and better. Um, being exposed to acceptance and love at a baseline level have, has caused me to sort of file a divorce with this world and its dumb fashion rules and its dumb conformity. And it's, oh, well, you have to wear this or wear that or look like this or look like that. You have to be cool, or you have to be thin, or you have to be beautiful, or you have to be gay or straight, or black or white, or all these, you know, you know, all the Bob Marley-ism, schism, you know, all that stuff is just done for me. I'm done with it. So when I'm out riding my skateboard, um, and I'm just having so much fun now, you know, there's a certain freedom I enjoy because certain issues are just settled. But there's a certain trouble I cause because I also don't care about certain things people value greatly. I don't care about conformity. And when conformity is the subculture's greatest dynamic, skateboarding right now. Yeah. Your kids don't want to skateboard. The reason your kids don't want to skateboard is because they're happy. And skateboarders aren't happy. Look at them, they're throwing their board because they can't do the trick. And if they don't do the trick, they lose their place in the culture. Mm -hmm. If they lose their place in the culture and the community because they can't do the trick, they're under a lot of pressure, so they throw your, and your kids are too smart to do that. Your kids are already happy people. Why become miserable? Most of the- But you're changing yeah. that culture. Working you're changing, yeah. If I can survive. <laughs> because, you know, I actually watched some YouTube that, that a guy said, look, skateboarding is really great. This is why you should skate. One of the things, it's, it's, hap it's, it's healthy, it's fun, it and is? it's safe. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Safe? You say safe? Yeah, no, it's not safe. Healthy, but it's not safe. <laughs> it's not safe. You need 12 good men. You can only find 11. There are six young lives. I'm still waiting for number seven. I may be living on Earth. I'm living for heaven. Man with a woman like a lizard on a rock. Man with a woman like a lizard on a rock. I don't say I understand it. That's the way Solomon used to talk. I got my black leather jacket, the one I wore through all my youth. 
I got my black sunglasses I feel just like William Booth Hey, don't ask me nothing about nothing Maybe I, I just might tell you the truth so we, we've talked how, you know, it's, it's so easy to, to not, not feel like we're not fitting in. We're, or we get into a situation where something happens to us when we're really little and, and, uh, and, or teenage years or whenever. And we're forming this idea of who we are. And then there's two ways to go, destruction or this indifference or just delaying this question, who am I and how do I show up in the world? Because if we show up in the world as who we're not, living somebody else's dream, we can't really live the purpose that we're created for and, and make the change in the world. Um, thank you, Lou, so much for sharing your story and for, for changing the culture and awakening and stirring the pot. I'm not sure I've done it, but I'm really happy. I'm going to stay in there. I'm well, going to keep being who I am. I have process. no other choice. It's a process. It's a life flow. It's what we're called to do. Thanks, Dutch.